Hi, good afternoon everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar for today. Thank you for joining us for the Beyond Satisfied webinar. My name is Megan Matovich and I will be your moderator for today. Uh, first I'd like to go over a few housekeeping things before I go ahead and turn things over to Jim, our presenter. So, for those of you who haven't attended a webinar with us before, or didn't get a chance to check out the GoToWebinars Attendee Quick Start video, let's briefly go over how to interact during today's presentation. So everyone should have a GoToWebinar control pa panel showing up at the top right of their screen, and you may notice throughout the presentation that this control panel collapses off to the side. To open it back up, just simply <coughs> click on the orange arrow at the top, uh, and that will expand the panel for you. Um, if you are logged into your web into the webinar using your mic and speakers and find that you're having difficulty hearing us, we suggest dialing in with your phone and instructions on how to do that uh, were provided in the webinar invitation and reminder emails. So you can just pop out and find the, the instructions for that. Um, but if you have any other technical issues, uh, please let us know by typing a message in the comments um, questions box over on your control panel here. And the majority of today's webinar will be spent discussing satisfaction surveys and customer service, but we will take time at the end for any additional questions you might have. Um, and feel free to uh, type a question into the questions box on your control panel anytime. And if we run out of any run out of time for your questions um, or you need additional clarification on anything that we discuss, uh, we will have contact information at the end. So you can reach out to us directly and we can get those answered for you. Okay, so then during the webinar, we will be conducting a poll or two. So once you see a poll pop up on your screen, just go ahead and click your answer. And then after the webinar, we'll be sending everyone a follow-up email with links to a survey about today's presentation. We ask that you take a few minutes to share your feedback with us, especially input on what other topics you'd like to see us do for future webinars. We're always looking for um, input on that so that we can get uh, great content out to you guys and answer lots of questions. And then also in the follow-up email, we're going to have a quiz. Um, the quiz is is for 1.5 continuing education business credits. Um, so if you'd like to take advantage of getting those credits, you can simply uh, click on the link for the quiz in the email and uh, we'll get those taken care of for you. Also, today's webinar is being recorded. Um, you'll receive a link for that as well in the follow-up email um, with info on how to access the recording and um, any handouts that we might have. So those handouts will be available. Okay, so now I'd like to go ahead and introduce our presenter, Jim Lawson. If you've uh, been to any of our state, any state or national meetings within the last five years, you've probably seen Jim. Jim is constantly sharing uh, his wealth of knowledge of ABC with all of you out there on the road, and um, today he is going to focus us in on satisfaction surveys. So I will let Jim go ahead and get us started. Jim. Thank you, Megan. Good day, everyone. Megan, I appreciate that, and I appreciate everyone joining us this afternoon, and, and we hope you get a lot of satisfaction from today's webinar. We'll start with a horrible pun like that, but anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to go over a little bit of kind of what we're going to cover today. I know that a lot of you have joined us on our past accreditation webinar series, and I think it's great that we have the opportunity today to dig a little deeper into some of the ABC standards um, with this webinar itself. So, But before we begin digging, though, I thought we'd take a quick look at uh, what we're going to be covering today. Uh, what we're going to be answering some of the questions about patient satisfaction surveys. So questions like, why do we offer them? Uh, who do we offer them to? How do we offer them? When should we offer them? Where should we keep them once we've offered them and got them back? And now what? Uh, those are kind of the next steps after compiling your survey results itself. So what we'll do is we'll discuss how all of this ties into your practice overall customer service program and can be used to improve your business with, uh, with the help as you uh, continue with your success itself. So the first question we discussed, why? 
why do we offer patient satisfaction surveys? It looks like this opportunity is a great time to offer the patient satisfaction survey to this patient. Um, why do we offer the patient satisfaction surveys? Why do we need to do it? Because ABC and Medicare says you have to. Is that right? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Well, you're right. It's true. But if your business is credited by ABC and you bill Medicare, then you are required, it is a standard, to go ahead and offer the patient satisfaction surveys, but there are really many more important reasons than just those two itself. So ultimately, why are they required? Well, how about learning more about what you need to improve, what you're doing well in the business, and, and what you need to pay maybe more attention to? It all comes down to one reason, and I talk about this a lot, one main reason. Basically, they help you learn how to provide the best health care possible you're able to provide. It's just that simple. So what do you offer them to? Who do you offer them to? Um, with my position here at ABC, I travel a lot, and sometimes I randomly am pulled out at the airports out of the TSA line for a swipe of my palm. They're looking for different uh, different substances and such, and, and it's, it's done randomly. I'm sure you've all seen it done before. Maybe you've had it done. But random doesn't fit into patient satisfaction surveys. In the ABC Accreditation Compliance Standard, it states that they must be offered to patients, not some patients or a select group of patients, but to all patients. Now, I, like I said, Megan mentioned, I speak at the, the OMP meetings across the country itself, and I address patient satisfaction surveys. And when I'm discussing those uh, during my sessions, there's sometimes some confusions about who should offer them. Some of the practitioners say they do it randomly, and some of the businesses do. We really can't do that. We understand that not all patients are going to respond to the surveys. So what we want to try to do is get the greatest amount of responses possible, and that's the situation. We need to offer them to all of the patients that you have itself. So it's also beneficial to patients. People want to be heard. People want to feel important. Your patients want to be feel important. That's a natural thing that everyone wants and everyone needs. We want to know what others understand us, and we want to know that if we have complaint. And on the other hand, we also find a bit of inner joy of letting someone know that they've done a good job. It's important if we have a complaint that someone understands us. That's, it doesn't matter if it's O&P, wherever we are. And those are a few of the basic needs that people have. So what are the benefits come from doing these surveys? Well, your patients actually benefit from the improvements and the changes that you and your team make to the service that you're providing itself. So it's also, we talked about there's benefits for you, benefits for the patients, but it's mutually beneficial. So let's talk about mutual benefits. Take a look at this picture right here, the bird and the alligator, for example. The little bird gets to bite and gets to eat the lunch out of the gator's mouth. That sounds disgusting, but it's true. And the gator gets his pearly whites clean. It's a win-win situation. Satisfaction surveys are also, also mutually beneficial. That's win-win also for you and the patients, both for your practice and the patients. So how do you better understand these mutually beneficial relationships? Let's just take a look at this little scenario as an example. In the 1980s and 1990s, there was a, a, a strong business trend to bring consultants into a business to spend about a week or so observing employees and basically how they did their jobs. This practice still takes place. It's expensive, it can be produce productive, but sometimes it can be it's in really gross and uncomfortable situations, much like the situation you see here. Has anyone ever seen the movie Office Space? This clip is from the Office Space here. You know what I'm talking about. This is Bob and Bob, and they're here, quote, to help you. Talk about uncomfortable, right? But patient satisfaction surveys, when they're done well and taken seriously, can give you some of the same benefits at a fraction of the cost. If all team, team members and your, and your staff take them seriously and re respect the information received from your patients, then they can be a very telling source of information to use and to grow and then to improve your business. It's not easy accepting criticism from everyone, but Everything that if you go in with an open mind, if you're ready to improve themselves and you and your team and the practice, then the surveys can become a very successful tool and you really won't need to be visited by Bob and Bob here. So with the patient satisfaction surveys, let's look into customer service as well. Now what separates your business from the O&P business across town? That's a very good question. To most patients, it lies within the quote feeling they get from the interaction with you, either in person or on the phone. There have been many mistakes forgiven 
because of great customer service. There are different, uh, I, I, I saw a survey once where, where um, people have far more allegiance to a, a business that has made a mistake and rectified that mistake than they do with businesses that just seem to do everything right all the time. It's a little strange, but human beings are a little strange also. Customer service starts with showing your customer, the patient, that they're cared for, and that you honestly care for their well-being and their feelings. Now, of course, the main thing you're there is to help them with their physical issues, but do your patients know that you really care for them? Ask them how they feel, asking them, what else can we do for you? Asking them, what can we do better? Asking them, how did we do? opens the door to caring customer service that will keep a patient with you for life. It really will. I read a study about high percentage of people who will gladly tell 10 to 20 other people when they receive poor customer service. Please don't be let one of those that you're one of the people that you're going to be told on, one of the businesses that people are going to spread things about you. Don't give anyone a reason to share a bad experience. But if you do have a bad experience with a patient, make sure you rectify that as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. Take action on that. Let them share their experiences with you by emphasizing the patient satisfaction surveys. So I think this is a good time, since we're kicking it off here, I think this would be a great time to do one of the polls, Megan. Um, does that sound okay? There we go. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's. This is very simple to do. The question is, how do you offer patient satisfaction surveys? If you could go ahead and just select one, and the options are handout at delivery, email, snail mail, paid patient satisfaction survey service you may use, or a combination of the above. So if you could just take you know ten seconds, go ahead and choose one of those. We'd appreciate that. Good, they're all starting to come in now. Excellent. Excellent. It's, it's kind of what I thought. Um, you've heard the term. Uh, there's more, and I'm going to talk about the poll here uh, in just a second. I'm going to bring it up here. Um, you've heard the term here that there's more than one way to skin a cat. I think that's very gross, and I don't want to imagine that, so I'm going to change it here. There's more than one way to cook an egg. I'm going to use that. In fact, I often ask my audiences and uh, how they offer patient satisfaction surveys to their patients, and I would venture to say a majority of the businesses offer a hard copy when delivering the device and the delivery slip itself. That's exactly just what came up in the poll. Over 50% said that's exactly what they do, and there's a reason for that. Um, it's, it's basically, it's the one way to offer them is probably the easiest way to offer them, but the question is, is it the most effective way? Now, studies have shown that most effective way is offering them in more than one fashion. Now, there are also, also practices that offer them by mail, by snail mail, with a stamped self-address envelope. There are practices that will offer and use a service such as SurveyMonkey for no charge. They'll do a link and people can take the survey online. There are other offers the survey uh, practices that will leave a tablet or an iPad possibly in their lobby where the patient can take the survey immediately as they are preparing to leave the office. And I've spoken to business owners also who take the next step and they make random phone calls. Now I'm using the word random, but listen to what I'm about to say, to random phone calls to patients just to ask them a few questions, satisfy, satisfaction questions after they've offered the survey in other manners. So that would be follow-up after they've already originally got their original survey. And of course there are fee services that you can, you can purchase and pay for that offer the surveys, they gather uh, the return information, they analyze it, and they create reports for you. So there's different ways to do that. And the poll we just took just kind of proved that it's, it is a mix. We had answers on each one of those, but the majority were um, given out at time of delivery itself. So what information are we looking for? What are we trying to gain here? Now, I've seen practices with patient satisfaction surveys full of wonderful, and what I call kind of feel-good questions, you know, where you offered a beverage when you arrived. The question is, what information do you want to gather? I've seen patient satisfaction surveys with five to ten questions that get straight to the point, only requesting information on how their team actually performed with their patients and the services they provided. How are we doing? How can we improve? That's the ultimate goal we want to find out. How can we offer better health care to our patients? Get to the heart of the matter. 
and of course offer each person an opportunity to share anything that they'd like to share even if it's not an answer to one of the questions you had so for example if you're having a patient satisfaction survey give them an opportunity to share something is there anything for example anything we haven't asked you is there anything you would like to share with us that we haven't asked along those lines it is really great to hear wonderful things about your team and it's a benefit to get confirmation that you're doing really well and performing really well with your patients. But seriously, it's even more important and it can be a great benefit to hear what your team needs to improve on. So this, I think, is a really great time to make you aware, if you're not aware already, of the ABC Compliance Resource Kit, which includes, this is something that ABC offers, it includes a sample patient satisfaction survey itself. If your practice is accredited with ABC, then this resource kit is available to you at no cost whatsoever. It's already included with everything you're doing with us. And what we'll do is we'll show you shortly how to access it and use the entire kit. But this is just one of the 17 tools that we have in the kit. This sample survey right here, it's at abcop.org. The sample survey is yours. You may take it. You may take the questions, you may use the entire thing, you may go through it and pull three of the questions out and add it to your survey. You can take it, put your contact information, slap your logo on it, and that's your survey from now on. It's just we, we created it with helpful a guide to bring in the information that will be beneficial to you for your surveys themselves. Now, it's simple to find the resource kit. As you see right in front of you, just go to abcop.org then go to the accreditation section, very simple, then click on this icon, icon the one up in the right hand corner, the red, red toolkit up there, and log into your accreditation account. All of the resources are there for your taking itself. I'll mention a couple other the, the resources that are in there as well a little later. So let's talk about your return rate. Okay, let's talk about how many you're getting back. Let's talk about what we're looking for. Um, it's not in black and white. Uh, I sit on a lot of panels and I speak in a lot of areas and I have a lot of panels with Medicare and CMS um, uh, attendees on the panels and they're representing the organization itself. So, so I've been told by different representatives that CMS, they would like to see a 33% rate of returns from your patient satisfaction surveys. Yes, 33%. That can be very high for a lot of businesses. For most businesses, that's a high number. When I take a poll, when I'm speaking to groups in different education sessions, I usually get a mixture of percentages, and I, they tell me they, I usually get anything from 5 to 15% range. Okay, So what can we do to increase that percentage range of your return? I'm looking at this next slide, and I like to think of it jackpot. That helps me right there. That is not me, I promise you. Jackpot, presentation, optimal questions, and timing. So, to hit the jackpot with return rates, let me take a look at this. Presentation P is everything, but we're going to come back to that in just a moment here. Let's go to O first. O is optimal questions. As I mentioned before, create a patient satisfaction survey concise and to the point. Don't waste your patient's time answering questions and asking questions that you would never do anything with their responses. So get to the point with your questions. Make the questions relevant to their business and to the services you provide. A good guide is to put yourself in their shoes. And from the first moment they make a call into your office for an appointment and how they were treated all the way through the final fitting and the follow-up calls and visits. How were they treated at each step of the journey with your business itself? So T. T is for timing. Be timely. Get the survey to your patients while their memory is still fresh in their minds. Some of you have heard me say and you've heard me speak at different, uh, different uh, uh, sessions and, and meetings across the country. So I have a question for each one of you right now. Today is Tuesday. What did you have for lunch last Thursday? If you think about it for a while, you probably can come up with the answer. Okay? But you really want to sit back and think of it. I don't, I don't remember what I had for lunch last Thursday. Okay? Don't expect your patients to remember how each step was handled if you don't ask them in a timely manner. Okay? The questions and the timely are both very important. Get those surveys to them as quickly as possible. Now let's go back to the P for presentation. I think most important difference in those who receive, let's say, a 10% of returns and those who receive, let's say, 65 is very simple. Explain the importance of the survey and just ask. 
So you're going to put this into your own words, but I'm suggesting taking 15 seconds, whether it's you as a business owner, you as a practitioner, you as an admin or an office manager, as an assistant, whoever has this conversation, put it in your own words, but I guarantee you it's going to make a difference in the amount of returns that come back in. Say something to the point of, we're asking you to take just a few minutes of your time to share with us basically how we're doing. We want to be aware of what we're doing, what we're doing well, and what we need to improve on. We can make sure that you feel confident enough to recommend us to anyone else who may have physical issues that we can take care of. So if you'd please just take a few moments to complete this survey, we would appreciate it greatly. It's difficult to turn someone down when they ask you for a personal favor like that, and it's all in how you present it, presentation. Okay? So, you've done all that. Now, they start coming in. What do you do with the results? Now that you have all the patient satisfaction surveys flying into your business, what do you do with them? Well, first of all, number one, please read them. Please do that, okay? Don't let it sit on a desk. If you need to have one person in charge of reading them and, and, and reviewing them as they come in, please have someone do that. They're worthless unless you spend time reading them, okay? If there are issues that need immediate attention, please don't let those issues grow by ignoring them. If you need to reach out to the patient, do so. Do it as soon as possible. Don't let an issue fester, okay? Jump on top of that. That's also good customer service. Everyone has patients that will probably never be able to completely satisfy, right? No matter what you do for them. But at least reach out to them and make sure you give an effort to satisfy them. If you're not able to satisfy them, at least let them know that you've listened to them and that you understand their issue. You may not be able to take care of them in that regards, but at least make sure they understand that you understand them. Now, again, if the survey is anonymous, reaching out to them really isn't an option, even though you know there's a possibility you may already know who they are, but respect their anonymity. But if you have an anonymous person tells you about an issue, please take it just as seriously as the comments if they weren't anonymous. Once you've read and returned the surveys and taken action on the problems, then you need to compile, then we need to analyze, and then we need to create an action plan, which we'll discuss shortly. Now, it's a lot easier to receive compliments than criticism, but you need to listen to the criticism if you really want to improve the business and your customer service and the health care you provide. So let's take a look at that compliance uh, resource kit again, the ABC Compliance Resource Kit again. And there's a couple of other things I want to show you in that kit. First of all, this one article is how to write and analyze patient satisfaction surveys. That's one of the tools. That's an excellent tool that, once again, it's yours. And the second is a guide to patient satisfaction trends. Again, these materials are at your fingertips. If your practice is accredited with ABC, Go to abcop.org, accreditation, click on the icon, and you're right there. All right, now they're all coming in. You're doing everything well. Everything is improving. You're getting all the surveys in. Where do you keep the surveys? When your ABC survey arrives for your tri-year survey, we, we do an, uh, an updated survey every three years, they're, one again, they're gonna want to see your survey results, your annual survey results. Now some practices keep a copy of completed survey, the individual completed survey, in the patient's file. That is perfectly fine. There's no problem with doing that, but I really wanna strongly recommend that you also keep a copy in a folder with all of the completed surveys for that year. You're going to need them when you create your survey report, okay? As opposed to going through every single patient file and pulling them out individually, who did one, who didn't, okay? Keep them in a survey folder and a file that will, you'll have all of them there together. The survey report, I mentioned survey report. Yes, it's true. I did mention survey report. With ABC, once you're compliant with ABC and the Medicare standards, you need to create a patient satisfaction survey report at least once a year. Many practices re, re, uh, create them more often. They do them quarterly, but you do whatever you need to with your practice, but we need to do it minimally once a year. It's basically the report is telling us what have we heard from our patients, okay? What have we heard from our patients? What are our patients telling us, okay? Now, the next step, next step is an action plan. Once you've created your report, what our patients have told us, we need to create an action plan. And that action plan needs to be evaluated through monitoring itself. 
So what could an action plan look like? This is basically stating the changes your team and your business is going to make, whether it's changing a procedure or a policy, and then documenting that change and how your team is going to make the changes. So I don't mean to make it, uh, make it confusing, but for example, an action plan can be as simple as this. It can state that you've heard from your patients that uh, they feel your phone calls are not being returned in a timely manner. Okay, so your change in policy is that your team will now make every attempt to return each call by, let's say, noon the next business day. Okay, that's your action plan. That's your action plan. We're going to show what the change is, and we're going to show how we're going to implement it to make sure that we're successful at making that change. Okay, your survey is going to want to see that folder with your action plan and basically how they're being implemented. So they'll check that for you. So. How about sitting in the patient's seat? How about that? Okay, I have a story for you. Um, I, I was talking to a practitioner. He told me when he was younger, he was working at a business, his first year in a business, and uh, he and his young wife um, had one car between them, and she would take him to work in the morning to the OMP practice, drop him off, and at the end of the day, she would come and pick him up at the end of the day. One day she came to pick him up, and he wasn't ready yet. He was still working for about another 15 minutes. So she went inside and sat in the lobby, in the waiting area. There was no one else there. And she sat there for about 15 minutes and started making observations around the room. She saw some stains on the carpeting. She noticed there was some uh, wallpaper peeling a couple different places. And she noticed up in the ceiling light, in the light cover, there were dead bugs. So he finished work. They came out to the car. She got in the car on the way home. She told him exactly what he saw. And he basically said, okay, fine. And she said, no, I need you to tell your boss. That needs to be changed. So he promised he would do it. The next day he came into the office and he sat down with his boss and said, I, I, my wife was here and she maybe promised to tell you this. And he told him all of the change, all of the issues that, that his wife noticed. Uh, the business owner finishes the day of work, closed up shop, and went out in the lobby and sat in the waiting area for about five minutes. And he looked around and he saw the stains on the carpet and he saw the paper wallpaper starting to peel, and he looked up and he saw dead bugs in the ceiling lamp, and he thought to himself, that is not what I want my customers to see. Here's the deal. We go to the same place every day. We walk by the same stuff every day. We don't notice things every day. Sometimes it takes another set of eyes to really focus on seeing what we need to change. So obviously that business owner made those changes very quickly, and he thanked the young practitioner's wife. He thanked her very, very much. It made a huge difference. Um, have you ever seen the television show Undercover Boss? It's kind of a neat show. We have a CEO from some boss. He, he or she puts on a wig or puts on a beard or something and goes and gets a job as a, as a, as a newly, you know, new employee on the very low of the bottom rung of the ladder itself. It's a very interesting show. I doubt you'll ever be able to go undercover in your practice itself and considered, but have you considered a little role playing? Having an employee, doesn't matter if it's the owner, doesn't matter who it is, having an employee going through the entire process from start to finish, just being able to see what it's like and what patients go through, how they feel, how they're being treated, how they feel they're being treated. It's just a thought. Make a phone call. Make an appointment. Um, that information can be very, very valuable to your business and to your customer service program. Understand the process through the customer's eyes. That's just a suggestion. So you're doing well. Like I said, everything's going well. You're getting those, those surveys back in. You're getting positive feedback, okay? They're loving you. So you've created this patient satisfaction survey. You've shared it with all of your patients. You've done it in a timely manner. You've shared it with the patients, the importance of completing the survey. And because they love you, they're turn, returning the surveys. You're receiving a good percentage of the surveys returned. You analyzed the surveys. You've created the report, everything we've talked about. You've created the action plan. Your results are extremely positive. Have you thought about marketing your practice itself? How would you do that? How about all those referral sources and the future referral sources? Have you thought about creating a one-pager, possibly stating the results of what your patients are saying and how your team can offer the highest level of patient care? Have you thought about just doing a one-pager, saying something to the point of, this is what our patients are telling us. This is the satisfaction they're having with us. Look at this high percentage rate. And who would you want to share that with? 
You want to share it with your physicians, your VA centers, your hospitals, your etc. Any of those areas that you will have the referral sources, right? Where else can you share the positive results? Do you create a patient newsletter? I know a lot of practices will put out a quarterly newsletter for their patients. Send that information, add that in. Look what we're hearing. How about placing those uh, results on your website? Okay, are you updating your website? Great way to market your practice itself. Personally, um, if someone tells me a place that and recommends that I go try it, the first thing I do is I go to their website and I take a look and see exactly what they're doing. Right? There are many practices that also hold events for their patients and for they open it up for the community. Do you do this? It's not a. Great, it's a great way to continue and improve your relationship with your patients itself. It's a way to help them feel that they're part of the team, part of a family. You want them to belong. They want to feel good with you, okay? It's a way to help them feel that they're cared for and they're important because they are important. They really are. They're part of your business and part of your success itself. So putting this together, I put five tips together. I think this is very good for communicating with your patients and really working on customer service. Number one, always practice two-way communications with your patients. Yes, your time is very valuable. You are the expert. You are the one giving the information. You are the one doing the work with the patient. We will never, ever forget that. But please don't forget to get communication back from the patient. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth. But please make sure that is a two-way communication, OK? Number two, provide staff with regular customer service training. It really is so much easier to do than it was 15 years ago. There's customer service training. You can go online and find videos. You can go find webinars like this one right here for no cost. Um, having a customer service update and program updated uh, regularly is worth its weight in gold. It really is. And plus, if you're not paying for it, all the better. Number three, strive for excellence in every interaction from the way a phone is answered to the cleanliness of your exam rooms, to the restrooms, to everything in between, okay? Start each morning. Here's a little idea. Start each morning with the day of, of the thought of saying, how are we going to give excellent service today? We know we're going to physically give excellent service. We know we're changing lives with our orthotics and prosthetics we're providing. We know we're doing that. But how can we strive for excellence in our customer service with our patients? Number four. Always show respect for the patients. Make them feel important. We all want to feel important. It's, it's, it's something that we all need and we all thrive on. Number five, show patients how much you value their business, not in just the words, but in actions. Okay? Let them know. Let them know. Make sure they're loved. So one other thought here is, while we're at it, on the next slide is, not only do we need to do patient satisfaction surveys, but it's also a standard. We also need to seek input, at least annually, from our employees, from the whole staff. So you may assess the quality of your operations and services from internally. Now, you don't necessarily need to do a survey of your employees. You may do this through staff meetings. You also can do a survey, staff survey. That's perfectly fine. And you can do interviews if you'd like as well. We need to do this at least annually. That's one of our standards. The any method you use to seek input must be documented in a file for this purpose. We know documentation runs our lives in the OMP. We know that. So it must be documented. And remember, the patient satisfaction surveys, this is another thought, could be a great tool to be used during your annual employee reviews and evaluations. Okay? You get feedback, not just from you and staff, but you get feedback from the patients themselves. All right. So everything is coming full circle. Okay. Now, before we get into the Q&A that Megan talked about, I want to show you one more resource that we have here. I want to remind you that this is where you'll find the specific accreditation standards that we've been referring to today itself. This is the Performance Management and Improvement Standards. This is the section in our Patient Care Facility Accreditation Guide. The standards that we've been talking about today have come around to just a total of six standards. And remember I mentioned earlier on that uh, we did the accreditation webinar series where we kind of covered everything, a 30,000 foot view of everything, and we were able to dig a little deeper today. All of these standards are just breaking down to six standards. They all are all in the performance management area improvement standards itself. Um, so please, if you don't have this guidebook, before we get to the Q&A, if you don't have this guidebook, let me know. We will send it to you. 
It's on our website. You can download it, very easily download it. Um, I will send you, uh, I will email a PDF of it if you would like, okay? If you don't have one of these, and I don't care if you're accredited with ABC or not, it's, it's a great, great guide. If you don't have one for at least whoever's taking care of your compliance issues and have a couple in the office, I definitely would have the business owner have one and whoever's working on compliance um, have a copy of it also. Print them out or we'll be happy to send them to you. So I think this would be a good opportunity, Megan, for us to break into Q&A. Have we received any Q questions so far? Um, we don't have any questions at the moment, but um, if you have something you want to ask, go ahead and type it into that questions box over on the right um, in your control panel. Um, Jim, I don't know if you want to go over anything specific about, um, I, I, I thought I would just mention all of those uh, great resources that we um, talked about in the presentation, like Jim said before, can be accessed on our website, which is abcop.org, and they can um, you can get to them a couple different ways. One is by going to the facility accreditation section um, of the web page and going to the resources over on the right hand side um, and there will be a link for the um, for the resource pack and that's where all of that lives. You can also go ahead and uh, directly log into your accredit, uh, accredited facility uh, account page and that will also have all of those um, links for the resource pack as well. Megan, I did want to just kind of a little bit of an overview. Um, we went through a lot of things today and um, uh, they are standard, they are accreditation standards, um, but it really isn't that extensive work. It shouldn't take that much of your time to do this work itself, um, especially I think if you go in with the right attitude and you go in knowing that the feedback is going to be positive for your business. It really is. Um, I, I strongly encourage you, as Major, Megan was just saying, I um, uh, strongly encourage you to take a look at the sample patient satisfaction survey that ABC has created. Um, like I said, you can use anything you want to out of that. But as I go through that, I look at some of the questions on there. Really, the feedback is good feedback that you're that you're trying to garner. You're trying to get that information back, and it's what you do with the information. Now you can, you can. I've seen. I'll be really honest. I've seen practices who do the patient satisfaction surveys, and they really don't seem to um, put a lot of uh, care into what they're doing with it. Okay. I've seen other pra practices who have put the interest in it and take everything that they receive back very seriously. And they've come to me and they've said, Jim, we're doing this and this and this. And I tell you, this is how we've changed this. This is how we're offering this. And now our, our patients are just loving what we're doing. Okay. I promise you, if someone's loving what you're doing, they're going to share that information. What a great way to get referral sources. So if we don't have any questions, it could be because uh, maybe we don't have a lot of questions. That's perfectly fine. Um, I, I actually got a few. Up, oh, great. So, um, let's see let's if we can see get if... these answered. So Karen, asks, uh, can you send the patient care guide in PDF form? And yes, the answer to that, Karen, I'll go ahead and skip over you, Jim. <laughs> yep, the answer yep. to that is yes, absolutely, we can send it to you um, in a PDF. Um, and obviously, if anybody else wants a hard copy, we can send that to you as well. Um, and let me just jot down Karen's name here. And Karen, if you, if you would actually um, email us, that way we can get um, your direct email address and make sure we've got the right person. Just shoot us a quick email. We'll have contact information at the end. We'd be happy to get that PDF to you. Okay, so um, Leanne asks, this is having to do with SurveyMonkey. She said, um, how do you suggest storing those SurveyMonkey responses for the surveyor to audit later? Um, I, in the past, in a different position, I've used SurveyMonkey and I have been able to print that out. That's what I did in the past. I'm assuming you still can do that. Um, please check with that. If, there, yes. are other, there are other uh, services that you can use for no cost also. But please, yes, before another... you have to start using it, please go ahead and check that you were able to print that out to keep that as documentation. Yes, you can. You certainly can. And I know you can also export um, the results for those surveys um, in an Excel file. Very good. Um, and there might be a couple of different other ways that you can export it, but I know for sure you can do it in an Excel file. And um, that would suffice being able to, to see a sort of an 
overview of all your different responses, you know, how many responses you got, when they were, and so forth. So yes, you can you can get all of that printed out or you can even store it electronically, you know, keep your Excel files exactly. electronically all in one folder and then allow the surveyor to, to look at them that way. You know, I wanted to emphasize a little bit. Um, I, I mentioned earlier on that, that offering the surveys one way is fine, um, but offering them more than one way it really is a big plus. Um, and just use an example as um, my, my father is 81 years old. He just retired a few years ago, a couple years ago, and he was a vice president of a structural steel corporation. And my father has had an email address for at least 15 years, at least 15 years in his office. And to this day, he has yet to open a single email. He would never open an email. He would never use an email. He just would never do it. I'm sure you have patients like that. If you have elderly patients, you may have some who never, ever would want to open an email. You send me a patient satisfaction survey. I'm going to ask you to send it to me on my phone. Um, I'm traveling all over. I will get it done, and I'll get it zip, 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 and get it right back to you. You send my dad a hard copy. Give him a hard copy with a self-addressed stamped envelope. He will do that for you, and he will get it back to you. And so if you have a mix of different ages of patients and, and a different variety of patients, then I would encourage you to go ahead and, and think about offering in different ways. If you had an iPad in your office, man, I'd love to stand there at your front desk and get that done and get it out of the way. That way it's out of my mind, I've done it, and I don't have to think about it. So that's just a thought, you know, offering it different ways, especially if you have different, if you have varied uh, patients themselves. Yeah, that's a great point, Jim. Um, so we got another question from Georgette. Um, she's wanting to know how long uh, they must keep um, their office must keep past surveys on hand once they've been evaluated and they've you know you've passed your um, survey and um, Medicare has possibly done an inspection so forth. How long should they be keeping those surveys? Certainly. Um, what I would suggest is you keep, um, since especially with ABC, we do our, our reaccreditation surveys every three years. I would keep the past two years just in a file. The surveyor, when they come in, for example, if, if you start over for a new year and they get in within the first couple of months, they may say, well, let me see last year's also. Um, I would, just to be safe, I would keep the three years on hand. After that, I really don't think you will need those at all. And three years take, is taking it to an extensive length, but just to be safe, I would do the three years. Okay, great. Okay, and I don't know, this might be a long lost cousin of yours, Jim, but we've got somebody with your same namesake. Um, but they are wondering, uh, they're under the impression that they could um, not hand out the satisfaction surveys at the delivery of the item. So can they hand the survey to the patient at the delivery appointment, or would they also hand a stamped envelope to have them mail it back later, um, or request that they fill it out there? Sure, they can do any of the above. Okay. Any of the above. Like, like I said, um, my dad would rather take it home. My dad would rather take it home and sit there and, and work on it at home. Um, it, it, it depends on the questions that you're asking also. For example, um, if you may be difficult to answer some of the questions prior to delivery. We don't want to do that and um, of, the, of the device. So any of the above will work fine. And is that my mom who wrote that question? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm assuming that they're asking whether or not, um, you know, can they actually give it to them when they're providing the device or do they have to wait oh, until yes. after they've left the patient area? No, they may give it to them when they're prov when they're providing the device. That is perfectly okay. fine. Perfectly okay. fine. Thank you. Good question. Thank you for asking that. Great. Um, we've got a couple other people who've requested a copy of Great. the accreditation guide. And um, well, Megan, would you like to go ahead and forward to the slide um, with our contact information? Yeah, absolutely. Hold on. We got one. We've got one more. Um, okay, certainly. When they would answer on the I, and I know we still have a little bit of time, so we'll go sure. ahead and answer this last question here. Um, it, so, when would the when when would the patient answer on an iPad? You know, the fall uh, during the follow up appointment, or um, how can they answer at the time of fitting? They could, if you were asking questions about the device um, and you're doing the patient uh, soliciting the patient's information and their feedback, then they would do that when they come back in. Yeah, um, for the follow-up. If the, right, for the follow-up itself. If the questions, if and, and I think that would be the, an appropriate time as well. Great. 
perfect. Okay, so it looks like um, that's all we have for questions. So I'm going to go ahead and um, advance this over to our contact page. Great. Mm -hmm. This is, whoops, go back one just real quick. Okay. That's our website, okay? This is abcop.org. Everything you'll be able to find on our website. Uh, we have an, this, see the picture of all of our staff right there? That is fake news. That is not our staff. Those are fine looking people. I'm not as handsome as those people there. But, oh. On our website, ABC, Megan is, Megan's as pretty as all of them, but at abcop.org, um, if you go to our staff section, we have a listing of everyone's name, everyone's email address, everyone's uh, specific telephone number, and it says beside their name exactly what they do at ABC. So if you have questions on standards, not understanding a compliance standard, You'll look at, you'll find three different, three or four different people who will be able to answer questions at that, okay? Very transparent. Please look at our website and call us for anything you may need, okay? And so, Megan, if you're sorry about that, you can go to the next slide there. That is my uh, email address. I travel around the country uh, quite often. Um, you may call me, but it may take a little while for me to get you a call back. If you email me, I promise I will uh, get back in touch with you a lot quicker. Um, if I am not the right person to speak to, if I don't have the answer, I will get the right person with you. I will personally contact that person within ABC and say, hey, let's have a conversation with this person who has this question, okay? So please don't ever hesitate to contact me. In the same vein, if you look at the other email address, that is our accreditation team. Accreditation at abcop.org. Any question you may have for them, if you would like to skip right to them, you go right ahead. Uh, we have five or six people sitting there waiting for your questions. They're not sitting there, but they're waiting for your questions. So anything you may need, please go right ahead and ask us. Megan? Yes, absolutely. Um, and like Jim said, if you um, feel like you have a very specific question and you want to go to our staff listing, that's uh, perfectly fine. But if you do email this um, accreditation email, uh, they will make sure that the right person gets back to you. So um, just a few things, just a reminder uh, that we are going to be uh, sending out that follow-up email. Today's uh, webinar will be recorded. Just uh, to be clear, usually it takes a little while for the recording to, to process. So we should have that email out to you and the recording available within 24 hours. So don't think that we've forgotten about you. Um, but we'll get that uh, email out. And it'll have a, um, a link for the webinar recording. Um, and that recording will be uh, available in our webinar library at our um, abcop.org. Um, you can find all the other webinars that we've done up to this point. Um, and you can also click to take the quiz for each one of those. So it's all in one place. Um, and uh, you can also get a link for the quiz within the email. Um, and if you'd like, we, we also have a YouTube channel. All of our webinars um, are living there as well. And we have some other great videos if you want to check that out. Um, but I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, that will be coming out. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to ask us. And we really appreciate your time for today. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And as Megan said, don't hesitate to ask us any questions. Don't forget the survey. Get your points. Get your CEUs, okay? Uh, don't forget the survey for the webinar. And don't forget to take the quiz. I look forward to seeing you at any of the meetings across the United States. If you do see me at the meetings, please come up and say hi. And please let me know that you uh, sat in on the webinar. I hope you uh, uh, got, got some good information from this today. And uh, fill out the survey. We really want to know um, what you would like to hear. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day and bless you all. Thank you. We good?